So I had a dream that I wanted to create a school system where you go to school, you get paid because it's your job to get educated. That's nice. And that's what we have now, not a dream. We are living the dream at Ideal Institute of Technology. We're not the concept, we're practicing that you enroll at Ideal Institute of Technology, you get paid because you're not coming to the school, you're coming to the job. And that's what we have in a work, and it's spreading like a fire now. So think about it. At Ideal, our model is we do what we teach. We teach IT. We run a social enterprise, IT. We teach construction, we run a social enterprise for a construction company. We teach advanced manufacturing, we have a woodworking factory. We teach music and film production. We have a music studio and film production company. We're the first and only school that I know of. There might be a lot of other schools, but that I know of that graduate students in an entrepreneurship program with their own business and operation. There are a lot of great universities, colleges, and schools in America. Best schools in the world. But when I look up entrepreneurship program, when you go in, we talk about business mark, business planning, marketing level one, business level one, product validity, and then go figure. At Ideal, we graduate students with the business in an operation. So if you enroll and start your own food truck program, you graduate with your own food truck. Wow. You enroll and start your own IT company program, you graduate with your IT company. <laughs> wow. We're a non-profit school, but we never fundraise. I was giving somebody an example. My kids go to Catholic school, and they come home with a booklet, fundraising booklet. Everything in that book raised my diabetes. Candies, chocolates, and all that. So I told the principal, I said, look, I pay $30,000 a year tuition. We're practicing Hindu. My kids are going to Catholic school because we love the moral value that you're teaching. You're teaching a good thing. Don't teach my kids whenever you need, go in a neighborhood and beg. So the principal said, what should we do? I said, give me 10 kids from your school. Send out a flyer. Which parents have a broken phone? Bring it to the school we'll run an after school program, we'll fix a phone. We raised $20,000 fixing phones. In that process, half of the kids got Apple certified tech certification. That's our social enterprise. Entrepreneurship is a trade. That's what we're practicing. And I started this journey in Atlanta City. Now, interesting thing before I talk about Atlantic City is when start, we started the youth program, non-profit programs, right? We pay $50 for each time, we provide bus pass, and we teach for free. And I don't have nobody, no line. I'm like, if in India I tell somebody, I would have a million people at the door. I want. Wow. Here in America, yeah. again, all those kids lose with the label. I couldn't find them to be interested in getting a $50 recycling, get a bus pass, and get a training for free, high end training for free. So I said, what is going on? So, what I learned is most of the nonprofits, and at this platform, I'll share this because I have a nonprofit. In this country, we spend millions, millions of dollars with the grant funded program to help the low income community, help the folks who need help. I have a my learning experience create a theory. Because if I talk about one, say South Jersey, we have a 50 to 100 million dollar get spent every year in a various program with various organizations. A lot of good organizations working very hard, but we still have a poor people. We'll still have an at-risk youth. Why? Because we all are just like a pharmaceutical company, and all these poor people are diabetes patients. We don't get to cure. We have to maintain a sugar level to keep getting paid. <laughs> so I decided I wanted to be in the business to put myself out of the business. And I'm successfully doing it. Because we are not a brand dependent anymore. 
Because our program, our social enterprise, that generates enough revenue that makes us grant independent, and that's how we pay our student. Historically, everybody was teaching life skills, soft skills. I refuse to believe that I have to tell a grown person without a mental health issue that you have to get up early, you have to shower, you have to pull up your pants, or you have to do this or do that. I have to provide an opportunity for why they have to do that. And that's what we started doing at Ideal Institute of Technology. So you're coming to the school, you're coming to the job. Get a 15 hours in a classroom, get a skills, and 25 hours, get to work. What do you like to do? You want to fix a phone, you want to do a construction, you want to do woodworking, or you want to sing, or you want to do music. Being a nonprofit, we never fundraise. Because if I get a hundred dollar donation, I put it on good use, and I spend it, now I'm better again. I will go better again. So instead of that, what we started doing, we started work raising. And we tell the, all those champions of the youth says, what if you provide change is life? Today's presentation about AI, our students did a four chatbot. What all those entrepreneurs provide that help us pay our students? My time's are up, and we have two more minutes, so I'll share this. That uh, why I'm doing this. The reason that I'm able to do this and I'm passionate about this, and I talk, I get excited, because the day I landed in America, August 13, 2000, I was 22 year old, undocumented, couldn't speak English. My first job was in Atlantic City. There was a mall behind Caesars called Ocean One Mall, three dollar an hour. And my dad in India used to make a one hundred US dollar equivalent a month. And if I can make it, you all can make it. That's why uh, I'm doing what I'm doing as passionate as I am. Thank you very much, guys.